looks like an infected leg. The fellow's on fire with fever. Let's get him into the stockade. from upstairs. Jacques Moreau. You hear me? I killed Jacques Moreau. For this. seen him and I never heard of anyone called Jacques Moreau. Sounds French to me. Well, all I can say is uh, anybody with a necklace like this is just asking to get himself killed. What's it worth, Cincinnati? Well, I can only guess, but all them pearls seem to be matched, and every one of them looks to be near perfect, so I'd say it was somewhere in the neighborhood of about um, oh, 50,000 pounds. Fifty thousand pounds. Looks like he's coming around. Who are you? My name is Daniel Boone. Who are you? I don't matter. All right. You were a. Uh... Confessing something to us, remember? Yeah. What day is it? 14th of March. It's too late. They're gonna hang him at the end of this month. They're gonna hang who at the end of the month? The man they convicted of killing Shark Moreau. They're gonna hang him for something I did. Well, just try to tell us about him. If they're not gonna hang him till the end of the month, there might be still enough time to save him. Too far away. New Orleans. What is the man's name they're gonna hang? Then I. I fell down, I tore my leg open. It got infected. The man's name. The fever. I got fever. It was, it was like, it was like the beginning of the pit. It was just like the...
It just don't seem right laying a confessed killer in a graveyard alongside a decent folk. Hey. For a man that didn't even leave his name, he sure left a crowd of mourners at his funeral. Well, we weren't there to mourn, Cincinnati. As long as you have that pearl necklace in your jacket, we want to stay close to you. Oh, yes, the necklace. I, uh, I just plumb forgot about it. That I don't quite believe. Well, it's something we're going to have to talk about right away. There isn't much time. What do you mean, Dan? Well, I mean, on the last day of this month, an innocent man's going to hang unless we get word to New Orleans. Yeah, the terrible thing. But the man was right. We couldn't get there in time to save him. Come on, Sister Nattis. Lay that necklace out so everyone can see it. It's not exactly yours. Oh, I know, but you tell me now. Whose is it? Well, Dan and I found the fellow. We brought him into the fort. Now, just a minute. If you think that gives you any more claim than anyone else, you're wrong. He brought that necklace out in front of all of us. What do you say, Dan? Well, I say that necklace is just about to head back to New Orleans. It doesn't belong to any of us. New Orleans? Dan, I'm an honest man. We're all honest men. But there's such a thing as carrying honesty too far. You can't give this necklace back to a dead man. That's right. And anyhow, this Jack Moreau, whoever he was, he, he likely stole it himself. Most likely a pirate, no doubt. Uh, how else could a string of pearls like that get to New Orleans? Let me try once more. There's a man, an innocent man in New Orleans, waiting to be hanged. And we have the knowledge to save him. If we let him die, we're no better than murderers ourselves. Dan, that just plain isn't true. It might be if there was a chance of saving him, but there isn't. We can try. If we leave right now and travel light, maybe we can save him. All right, Dan. If that's the way you feel, go ahead. No one's stopping you. That's right. No need in everyone going. Is that the way you all feel? All right. Thanks. That's just what I'll do. No, 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 just all of you, simmer down. I can't save him without the necklace. Why not? Well, think about it. I don't know the man's name. I don't even know the name of the man we just buried. I can't walk into New Orleans and claim this man is innocent. Who's going to believe me? I have to prove he's innocent, and the necklace is all the proof we've got. Now, Lang, you wouldn't condemn an innocent man to hang for 80 pounds. Certainly not. Well, if you divide the value of this necklace among all the folks who live hereabouts, that's just about all one share is going to amount to. So I reckon I'll be going south. But, Dan, just a minute. I guess we uh, have let the value of the necklace make us forget the real issue. But if you insist on going, it's not right you should go alone. Well, you were going to let me go alone before you found out I had to take the necklace. Not so dangerous for you, then. Well, I reckon uh, two witnesses to a dead man's confession is better than one. Good. I'll go pack and see. We'll leave first thing in the morning. Well, I'm going to leave as soon as I go by my cabin and pick up my pack. If I see you coming before I cross the South Ridge, I'll wait. I'll be there, Dan. You don't have to wait. Good luck, Dan. Well, there goes our 50,000 pounds. I'm surprised Lang changed his mind about it. I'm wondering if he really did. Oh, come now, Carl. You can't be thinking what... Oh, no, of course not. I got no right even suggesting such a thing. A Lang's absolutely sincere. I agree. If I didn't think like that, I might go along myself. As it is, I think I'll just, uh... I was here long home.
see Dan. I told you you wouldn't have to wait. Uh, now that we're alone, maybe we can talk this thing over calmly. What's there to talk about, Lang? Well, well, what I mean is, well, back at the stockade with everyone standing around, a, a man couldn't exactly say what he was thinking. Mm -hmm. well, what are you thinking? Look at it this way, Dan. How many times in a lifetime does a man have a chance to make a fortune? Well, I don't know. I'm not quite through living yet. You have that chance right now. Well, now, there's not a chance in the world if you're thinking what I think you're thinking. You can go back right now, Lang. No, no, Dan. I, I, I just wanted to be absolutely sure you mean to go through with this. After all, it's a, it's a long way to New Orleans. All right, let's stop wasting time. You lead off. Sure, Dan. Be sure and keep your eyes out. I think there might be somebody on the trail in front of us. Oh? And I don't know if they know that we've got the necklace, but as you've been trying to tell me, 50,000 pounds is a big temptation. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I've been trying to say, Dan. Now, we haven't seen or heard a soul. Now, we're wasting time wandering around in the dark. I say we get some food and rest so we'll be fresh come daylight. All right. But not here on the trail. Let's head up this draw and see if we can find a place where we're not apt to have company. I still say it's impossible to get to New Orleans in time to save that fella. Not without horses. Well, I've already thought of horses, but I think this way will be faster. <clears throat> Once we get to Grimes Ferry, we can get a canoe. That'll take us into the Tennessee River, and we won't have to stop day or night for over 300 miles. Suppose Pa Grimes doesn't have a canoe. Well, there's no use supposing ahead of time. He usually has a half a dozen. If that old river pirate finds out what you're carrying, he's apt to cut your throat. I hope you don't plan on telling him. And get my own throat cut? No, sir. And if you're right about someone being ahead of us on the trail, we might not even make it to Grimes Ferry. I suppose. Well, let's get some sleep.
like that? Nor you either. Well, what are you doing here anyway? Uh, well, after you left the stockade, I saw you take off like a jackrabbit and I got to wondering. Wondering what? Wondering what you're up to. And I'm still wondering. What are you up to? Well, uh, I've got to thinking about Boone and Lang. That's what. Uh, just two men. All alone in the wilderness, carrying something worth 50,000 pounds. And I figured that might cause trouble between them. Well, I didn't want that to happen, so I decided to join them, uh, keep the peace. And why didn't you join them? Well, I tried to. I, I was waiting for them up the trailer piece, but they never come along. So I come back here looking for them, and I found you instead. I don't know what you're insinuating. But I can insinuate the same thing about you. Quiet. You hear something? What? Someone's coming. You don't suppose it's Boone and Lang coming back? Maybe Boone changed his mind. Yes. Maybe he was after that necklace all along. It's Lang! Huh? What are you two doing here? More important, where's Boone? You were with him. He ditched me. Now, let me up. Just where are you going? Back home, of course. No chance of finding Boone now. He's got that necklace all to himself. You certainly are in a hurry to get home. Running all through the night when any sensible man would be asleep. Oh, well, I could say the same for you two. Now, if you don't mind, I'll be on my way. But we do mind, and we're going to search you first. <laughs> Oh. Any man who doesn't want to be searched must have something to hide. He's got it. All right, all right. Boone had no right to take it. We'll make it a three-way split, right? No. You were aiming to take it all yourself, so that sort of rules you out. Just tell me one thing for the moment. Is Boone still alive? What kind of a man do you think I am? Of course he's alive. I just took what belonged to us. And we better be on our way, because Boone's going to be coming after us. Uh, yes. Well, I'll just take a look. It's not there. Where is it? What have you done with it? I thought it was there. I took it out of Boone's pack. Well, go ahead, search me. Well, didn't you look in the case when you took it? With Boone liable to wake up any second, I got out of there. And he still has it. He figured you might try and steal it, and he took it out of the case. Of all the dirty, cheating tricks. And it wasn't stealing. That's right. And we still got a chance to get it. Now, now where is he? Come on. It's not far. Gone. I didn't imagine he'd wait for me. You're wrong, Lang. I waited. And I am ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of all of you. But, Dan, all me and Cole did was to catch him running off with this jewel case. We was trying to get it back to you. That's a lie. 
If that necklace had been in that case, you two would have been on your way east. You said as much. Stinch said it. I didn't. No, I, I just ran on an uh, accident while I was looking for, for you and Boone. All right. Hand it over. You have no further need of it, Stinch. One reason I waited was to find out who all was on my trail. I'd much rather have you with me than follow me. Dan, I, uh, I know I tried to run off with that thing, but if you'd only agreed to some kind of split... The second reason I waited for you is because a man is going to hang unless we testify to his innocence, and the more witnesses he has, the better. Maybe if we all testified to that confession, we wouldn't have to mention the necklace. And the third reason I waited is that Paul Grimes is not always hospitable to the solitary traveler. Sometimes he helps him, sometimes he robs him first. Now, I would feel safer in company, especially if it's company I can trust. Now, are you going to go with me or are you going to go back? I'll go with you, Dan. Me too. I always intended to. Well, I don't know why you two can be trusted any more than me. And I'm telling you, Dan, no man is safe carrying that necklace. I've already found that out so someone else can carry it. Here, Stench, catch. Well, we'll give it to Stench for it. He can't be trusted any more than me. Well, you have to start out by trusting somebody. Now, you can carry it this afternoon, Call, providing Stench hadn't run off with it. I reckon I'll just go along with Dan a piece. You'll bet you will. And you'll walk in front of us where we can keep an eye on you. All right, all right. <laughs> Setting a pretty fast pace, Dan. All right, if we rest a bit. Uh... Well, Grimes Ferry can't be more than an hour away. You can rest while we're paddling. Well, it's past noon, and I think it's just about time for me to start carrying that necklace for a while. I get nervous expecting Stinch to bolt. What do you mean? I haven't made a move. You've been thinking about it hard enough. Easy now. Things have been going pretty smooth for a while. If Carl wants to carry, let him carry it. It's his turn. Well, I reckon I'll ride in a canoe with Carl. I reckon I might be disputing that honor with you. All right, you heard what Daniel said. Now hand it over. What's wrong? Uh, I, I ain't got it. It must have slipped out from beneath my coat somewhere. Unless one of you fellas took it off me. Nobody's been that close to you now. Where is it? I tell you, I ain't got it. It must be back along the trail someplace. You didn't lose it. You cashed it. You aim to go back and find it when nobody's looking. But you're going to find it for us right now. That's right. Now, where is it? I tell you, I don't know where it is. It's lost. You're going to stay with us till we find it. Now, come on. Well, anyway, Matt, this is a pretty good show, but it's mighty unnecessary. Stinch is telling the truth. He doesn't know where it is. Well, he sure didn't drop it by accident. Nope. He cashed it all right. Only it was uncashed a couple of seconds later. I had hoped you all had reformed. Oh, you got it! Call, I don't know whether you or Stench are going to win first prize in acting. Now, you forfeited your right to carry it because you've got it. Now, hand it over. Search it! Stop it! Go! Go!
be leaving you. I feel safer alone. Now, you just stay where you are till I get out of sight. You certainly fix things for all of us. Oh, shut up. I didn't do any more than you and Lang tried to do. Oh, shut up, both of you. If we'd have stuck together instead of each one trying to get a necklace for himself, we'd have it by now. 50,000 pounds split three ways isn't bad. I don't reckon there's a chance of catching Boone before he gets to Grimes Ferry. But we can catch him after that. Three paddles is a lot faster than one. Off any time. Not yet. Looks like we got one last customer. Hey, that fella looks familiar. Better look busy. Oh, there, Grimes, you remember me? Why, sure, Donald Boone. What brings you by these parts? Well, I'm on my way to New Orleans. Thought maybe you could sell me a canoe. You seem to have several. New Orleans? Why? Ain't got no furs, nothing to trade. Nope, but I'm uh, kind of in a hurry. I'll, I'll take a look at them. This one should do fine. How much do you want for it? Uh, trouble is, Boone, I, I've been thinking about going out of business. We, we just about to leave here. Oh? Well, ain't nobody comes by this way anymore. You're the first one by in months. Well, how about $10? I ought to be able to get something for it at the end of the trip. Oh, you don't seem to understand. Now, first, we're going to have to find out how much you can afford to pay. I'm beginning to understand. Now, if you just hand over that pouch and that rifle, we'll see if you're carrying anything of value. <laughs> now, come on, Boone. Give me that rifle. We're going to have to get her up with you. It'd be kind of foolish, Grimes, considering my men would have to open fire on you. They're all crack shots, and you're all wide open targets. like Boone's in some kind of trouble. As I said, I'm in kind of a hurry. Here's your $10. If you don't mind, I'll try out this canoe before they get here. <laughs> yeah, OK, yeah. yeah. You know I was only joking with you, don't you, huh? No. He's getting a canoe. We're going to stop him. Come on. Quick, how much for a canoe? Ah, oh, Boone just bought one. He's trying it out now. Try that out my foot. He's escaping. Escaping? You mean he ain't your leader? A leader? He's a thief. He's got a pearl necklace for 50 cents. Shut up, you fool. Stand away. Tie him in the shed. Make it hot for him.
ready now? We're all ready. All right, let's go. You came back, Dan. Well, I heard a rifle and I figured you might be in trouble. I reckon I owe it to you. If you had to come along when you did, Grimes would have the necklace and I'd probably be in that shack. What are you going to do now? I'm going to go on, of course. If your rifles are where you dropped them. You better pick them up and get out of here. Bone, wait. Grimes knows you have the necklace. He's after you. I, I blurted it out without thinking. He won't give you no chance, Dan. He'll shoot on sight. When he finds you not down river, he'll be waiting for you. It'll be dark before long. I'll be able to slip past it. Thank you for telling me. After losing all this time, you can't possibly get to New Orleans in time to save that fella's life. That's right. And nobody expects you to risk your own trying to. Well, I didn't plan it this way. This is just a little difficulty that came up. All right, but it's all the excuse anyone needs to quit. Well, I'm not looking for an excuse to quit. I'm trying to keep a man from getting hung. Doggone it, Dan. Can't you realize a man who gets himself convicted for a crime he doesn't commit must be a bad sort? He probably deserves hanging anyway. And if you turn that necklace over to the authorities, like as not, they'll sell it and keep the money for themselves. That's right, the dirty bunch of crooks. Uh, and look, Dan, if we took that east and sold it, think of all the fine things we could do. We could build a school for the kids, and we could build a church for the folks where they could go and learn to be Christians. I... Uh... Oh, Dan. All right. Dan, supposing you're too late, supposing the fellow's already dead, then will he keep the necklace? No. Nope. May have a family. It's pretty tough on a child growing up in a world that thinks his father's a murderer. I'm too late to save his life. The least I can do is clear his name. I'm on my way. Getting himself killed for a stranger. Not much left to this shed.
What's wrong? He got to us just in time, didn't he? I suppose I should feel more grateful for being alive, but I don't much. How are you fellas feeling? If something's gnawing at me, and it's... And it's gonna gnaw a lot harder and harder till the end of our days. You know why? Because we're acting like a bunch of cowards. Oh, but we tried to stop him. He's on a fool's errand. He's got no right to expect our help. I don't recall his asking for it. And it's too late now, anyway. If that gang of river pirates is waiting, they'll have him. How do you know it's too late? There's another canoe over there. The three of us can paddle a lot faster than he can. Well, ooh. Well, if we're going, let's stop wasting time. All right, let's go. He's up on it. Take it over the shore there. Pull it out of the water and hide it right in there. Why are we stopping? Well, he's behind us somewhere. Otherwise, we'd have caught up with him. But now, we'll just sit here and wait. We may not be on the river at all. Well, it costs us nothing to sit here till the morning. Better, uh, better spread out along the bank here. I don't want no fires. I don't want no noise.
hurt someone. One more chance. That necklace. <laughs> you throw out that necklace, I'm gonna let you go. His gun's empty. Let's go get him. sure are persistent. Yes, we are. And now for the last time, Boone. Are you going to hand that necklace over peaceably? Nope, not peaceably. Only I don't know how I'm going to get to New Orleans. I lost my canoe. Oh, we've got a canoe. That's a lot of paddles. You can still make it in time. All right, Lang. carried a while. That man was guilty of murder. He was the keeper of the inn where Jacques Moreau was murdered. Some guests heard Moreau groaning and ran to his room to see what was wrong. See. And they found the accused standing over the body with a bloody knife in his hand. His story was that he too had heard Moreau groaning. Suspecting foul play, he armed himself with the knife and ran to help Moreau. But he was a moment too late. And, uh, in his astonishment, he dropped the knife in Moreau's blood. Why wouldn't they believe his story? Ah, the point is, the jury thought he did have the necklace, but would not produce it, because that would have been absolute proof of his guilt. And so, here it is, at last. What's going to happen to it now? Uh, yes, Who, whose is it? I believe that it is yours. <laughs> Ours? Oh, no, no, I, I do not mean yours personally. I mean, the necklace was destined for your country. A loan from the Queen of France to provide instant support for the sinking finances of your revolutionary cause. Jacques Moreau was a French agent, you see. His ship was destined for Philadelphia, but because of the British blockade, uh, had to come here instead. Well, then the necklace will have to go on to Philadelphia. Yes, that is right. 
that uh, the blockade still exists and the British are searching every ship, it would be far safer to transport it by land, particularly if I may entrust it to uh, four such men as yourselves. Well, yes, I suppose we can do that. No trouble at all. <laughs> That's right. Now then, uh, to which of you may I entrust it? I'll, I'll take it. it. <laughs> <laughs> 